Good afternoon. I'm Tom Dolan, President of the Committee for Open Democracy. In April of 2012, the Republic of Georgia issued an open call for international election observers to monitor its October parliamentary elections. The elections are widely viewed as an opportunity for Georgia to continue its democratic development and strengthen international objectives such as joining the European Union and NATO. The Committee for Open Democracy responded to the invitation to work as international election monitors and arrived in the country the same month. The committee is proud to have been the first and the longest serving observation mission in Georgia for these 2012 parliamentary elections and we fielded 20 long-term monitors throughout the country. This report covers our findings starting from April the 15th through September the 28th, three days before Election Day. The early arrival of our observers and commitment to the pre-election process allowed us to devote several weeks to classroom study by our monitors uh, of the Georgian election code. They also had intensive training and election day procedures as mandated in the Georgian statutes. During this time, our monitors have met with hundreds of participants in the electoral process, including political parties, candidates, domestic and international civil society organizations, news media, election administrators, international observers, foreign diplomats, and voters in every region of the country. This has allowed us, this has allowed trained monitors to establish and nurture relationships with all the participants in the electoral process in order to properly document, observe observations and complaints as well as provide recommendations. The committee investigated all issues at hand and conducted post-incident follow-ups before regularly presenting their findings to the public. Committee for Open Democracy is uh, based in the United States, in Florida, 
It is a not-for-profit uh, organization and is non-partisan. In addition to our work in the Republic of Georgia, the committee has been accredited for uh, has been accredited and active in Ukraine uh, for the 2010 national local elections. Also in Ukraine for the 2012 special local elections and the 2012 parliamentary elections to be held on October 28th. We also have had observers in Moldova in 2010 for the parliamentary elections. And we will have observers in Slovenia for the 2012 parliamentary elections in November. And in Montenegro uh, in October for the parliamentary elections. Our monitors have observed numerous international elections around the world. With a combined total experience of over a hundred observations. Committee for Open Democracy maintains an active social media presence on Facebook and our website is located at www. Dot committee for open democracy dot org. The Georgian parliamentary election scheduled for October the first is highly polarized. Between the ruling party, uh, United National Movement, UNM, and the newly founded Georgian Dream Coalition. The competition between these two large parties has marginalized the number of smaller parties. This election represents the most competitive electoral environment in recent Georgian history. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thus, the October 1st parliamentary elections will take place in a tense climate with fear, unfortunately, playing a large role. To give us more detail, I'd like to introduce Brian Mefford, the Executive Director for the Committee for Open Democracy. Since our monitors have been in the field since April, we have identified a number of areas of key concern. First of all, pressure on the mass media. Essential to all elections is the freedom of expression and assembly 
and no other branch of society is as important in this regard as that of the media. Regrettably, the media in Georgia is generally biased towards one end of the political spectrum or the other. The much anticipated, must carry, must offer legislation, which has been passed by the parliament with the objective of creating a more equitable media environment in regions, has manifested in different fashions than originally designed. In addition, unlike established democracies such as Canada, which has year-round must-carry, must-offer legislation, the Georgian law expires after, immediately after the election. In recent days, there's been growing grassroots pressure to continue the must carry, must carry, and must offer legislation after the election. Also, our long-term monitors have noticed in the regions that intended critical television programs are not being aired during prime time and thus limiting access to information. More troubling though, over the last few months, the media has encountered physical attacks, denial of access to facilities, and intimidation. Recently, there's been an escalation of these physical attacks on journalists, and when the attackers are apprehended, they are often tried under a different statute of the law than was originally intended by the various legal codes. In addition, some journalists have complained about being stalked and harassed by partisan individuals posing as journalists. Violence against journalists or any other participants in the electoral process has no place in an election environment that desires to be considered fair. A second area of concern involves the voter list. In August, we held a press conference to draw attention to the results of our investigations and concerns over the Georgian voters list. The voters list is the starting point for a clean election. In our press conference, we highlighted anomalies and problems such as eight voters registered in a vacant lot and 46 voters registered to an empty building. In 
Our investigations also discovered instances where international organizations have six registered voters at an address at three to Bukashvili Street in Tbilisi. Well, the government's formation of the Voters List Commission earlier this year was a well-intentioned move. The jury is still out on the final product. Reliable Georgian non-governmental organizations conducted sampling to review the accuracy of the list and discovered numerous problems, including dead voters, voters registered in empty buildings, and other problems similar to those discovered by the Committee for Open Democracy. A third area of concern involves the abuse of administrative resources. The Georgian Dream Opposition Coalition was punished with ridiculous fines and penalties for the rental of party headquarters used to conduct the normal operations of the political party. In another case, the leader of the opposition coalition had a bank affiliated with his business interests which was seized by the government and returned only later after the payment of huge fines. In all, the Georgian Dream Coalition was fined more than 130 Georgian lorries, which is the equivalent of almost $80 million. These fines are clearly unprecedented. In another case, a candidate and former football player had money directly seized at his own bank accounts on questionable pretexts. The candidate was fined ten million US dollars, which is three times which is larger than the three largest campaign fines in the United States and the United Kingdom combined. To draw a contrast with the United States, the largest fine ever levied in a congressional or parliamentary campaign was $34,000 in the year 2004. These were systematic attacks on the ability of the opposition to wage a campaign and have contributed to the climate of fear. In contrast, fines levied against government-affiliated candidates were minor and almost non-existent. 
Ամիս տապերիս պիրոտ թարովաստան ասոցիրովուլի կանդիտատերպիս մի մարդատասեպուլ ճայնովի ծալիան սիրայի գոտա թիտքմի սարարսեպուլի։ Բայլի դվայնս ռլավին բայլ է նյլի կրիտիտ գովրմը մանի նոն ասը չեմբր ավ կնչրով։ Դա բոլոս However, two of the top officials of the Chamber of Control are on the party list to Parliament for the ruling United National Movement. When a ruling government finds political opponents in a competitive environment, it suggests that the fines are politically motivated rather than justified on the merits. Հոտեսաց մարդվել իս համ թարովա աջարին ես պոլիտիկ ուրով ունեն դեպս կոնկուրենտ ուլի արջոն էպիս պերիոտ չի, չինտեպա մուսասրեպար, որ այս ճարիմ է բիաց պոլիտիկ ուրատ մուտի իրեպ ուլի դարա սամարդիրեն։ Selective enforcement of the laws is hampering this election environment. For example, the widely publicized case of when the opposition leader decided to enter politics he had his citizenship stripped by the Georgian government. This was done on the grounds that he holds foreign passports and prevented him from being a candidate for parliament in this election. Միզիտատ տասախալ դա իսում մաս ապս խապը ընեպիս պասվորտավից, դա ռիալուրը դանուսուան խելի շեղուշալը մաս իմաշիրոմ կանեխործել է բինեպ արլոմետիս խանդավուշտո մարավը ամարջանավիս շատեք։ Then, only under international pressure, the Georgian parliament passed a new law to allow non-Georgian citizens to serve as prime minister. Դա ամիս շանտեպ խոլըց հայրթնչորուս ու սեծովիս շետեկա ծակարթոլոսում պայլոմենտվա մի ու ախալի կանոնիր, ու մեծ ուպլ է բասացրեպտա առա սակարթոլոս մոգալակես կանխտարիկո պրեմիեր մենիստրիր։ Շենտեքի պրոբլեմ միսի սապիտխի այմուատկես ծիխ է եպստա պատիմրեպիս բորոտակ պատիմրեպիս է բորոտակ մոպրովաս։ Վիլիո ռտեպս ռլիս ոն սեպտեմբր այթին հեմ ավրեջ դի նեշն ոն ոս ռվիլ դի վայնսպրեմը բիյուս � ուպի դետք իտուրեսի աղջպոտ է բար, ոտեսյոտ կարմով լինդարով մատգիկ կոնդա բատ իմրամս է պարթոտ կարձել է բուլ շահուրած ոպաստա զեծով աս։ This video is a spark student demonstrations which have resulted in the resignation of two ministers of the government. Ավ վիտեղո չնանց էր այպիս կամով մուշխավում է պամը ասած այսի միստա ստուդեն տորը սապորտաստով մոցրահով բեպս ռամած շետեպար կամույցույա որի մինիստրեիս թանանտեպովիս տարտորվա։ While the resignation of these ministers is a positive step, the abuse of prisoners must be ended, and more specifically regarding this election, there remains huge concern about the pressure on inmates' families to vote for government-affiliated candidates. Մի ուղխատա ադեմիս առամ թարովիս մի էր ամինիստրեպս կատաղ են էպա տադեպիք նավիջիա, իսեղ չէ բա այս պրոբլեմատա ռատկան ունտա պատիմրեպիս մի մարդ սիշոված ոպատասեց ոլա ունտա դամթարոտես, դա առատ շեղ էպա սպեցիվի there are 38,000 persons in Georgian prisons and more than 300,000 people currently on probation. 
This amounts to almost 10% of the WH population and leaves those individuals and their families vulnerable to pressure. Another problem in this election is the politically motivated accreditation and denial of certain election observers. Last week, the Georgia Central Election Commission denied accreditation to veteran observers from our organization, the Committee for Open Democracy, on politically motivated grounds. This is because the Georgia Central Election Commission is afraid that we will continue to objectively report the truth. In contrast, observers from organizations that were perceived to be friendly towards the Georgia Central Election Commission were quickly and easily accredited. In August, the Georgia Central Election Commission accredited observers from the Republic of Belarus, which is known as the last dictatorship in Europe. To worsen the matter, one of these observers is Lydia Yermoshinia, who is the chairperson of the Belarusian Central Election Commission since 1996. Due to Lydia Yermoshinia's direct involvement in election fraud, she has been put on a visa ban list in the United States, in the United Kingdom, and in the European Union in 28 of the world's most established democracies. The accreditation and open approval of such a notorious individual who has directly knowingly and blatantly been involved in election fraud calls into question the credibility and political motivations of the Georgia Central Election Commission. In conclusion, the Committee for Open Democracy has been monitoring the political situation in Georgia since April 2012. We shared, we shared Georgia's aspirations for joining NATO and the European Union. We also support the territorial integrity of Georgia and the return of the occupied regions, regions of Kazia and South Ossetia. It is our hope that this election will truly be free and fair, and that the results will reflect the will of the Georgian voters. We are concerned about the potential for violence following the election and call on all participants in the electoral process to respect the human rights of their fellow citizens. 
Based on our findings of our long-term monitors who have been in Georgia since April, our conclusion is that the pre-election environment has not been conducted fairly and that administrative resources have been used by the government to gain unfair advantage in the election. Committee for Open Democracy has serious concerns that these elections will not reflect the will of the Georgian voters. This concludes our report. I thank you very much for being here today.